Hello and welcome to the Synergy CNC YouTube channel with me, Cody. In this episode, we're going to be looking at a hack of how we can use an iPhone camera to copy an existing part of a complex radius and turn it into a vector, which we can then machine um, on the CNC machine. You'll find when you've got a CNC machine, everybody comes in with favours and they're always complicated because they can't do them. So let's look at how we can make those things as easy as possible in the workshop. Let's get into it. So here is the image that we've taken. Now we've used um, some grid paper and we've used the grid on the iPhone camera. The reason we have done that is to ensure we're lining it up and keeping it flat and we're also ensuring we're shooting from the center of the part. This is to reduce any parallax error that we would um, generate by obviously shooting from a single focal point. If we have really large parts, we can take multiple pictures moving across grid by grid, and then we can stitch these together afterwards. Um, but on, in this instance, because the part's so small, we can get away with doing it from a single photo. Using VCarve Pro here, we are going to import the image as a bitmap. Now a good trick, if you come down into the picture editor, we can make the contrast much greater, just to make our lives a little bit easier. So then what we're going to do is take the um, uh, draw curve tool. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to pick up the points as we go around. Now what's important here is I've turned off the automatic snapping features because they will um, try and correct this for us and we don't want that to happen. So we're going to need now to actually set the scale correctly. Um, so it's going to measure the length and height of this part. And then to scale it, we can use the select object size. And then I can set my X and my um, Y. So I've measured that at 165, um, it's come at 0.2 over, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So that has now set the scale of my parts. We have basically created the exact copy. All that we have to do now is create a nest. Um, we're gonna want to have six of each of these. And simply, we're going to create a profile tool path, cutting all the way through the material using a 6mm single flute up cutting tool. 
Uh, we use tools here from Remy. We're cutting on the outside of our part in a conventional direction. And then all I'm gonna do is add tabs. Now, with something like this, you could say, oh, I want to use a vacuum bed. Uh, because we're using a piece of scrap material, um, it's probably smaller than one of the zones of the vacuum bed. I'm actually gonna add tabs instead of using the vacuum. Now, I could click where I want them. Alternatively, I can say I want to have two on each. And then lastly, I'm just gonna calculate that. Preview my toolpath. And then I can save that. And we can post that to the machine and make the parts. So here we have the finished part. There is our original hand cut template. And this is the finished part. So it's not been sanded. This is exactly the quality it has come off the machine. We can still see the remainder of the uh, tab there. So if we put those together, we can see we have a pretty perfect match. Now the benefit of doing this meant we have been able to make multiple copies of a particular form rather than a single one. Multiple copies of a particular form rather than a single one.